Step number one in the 10 steps is to cleanse and detox. Even if your diet is clean and nutritious, our bodies need some extra TLC to keep them running. And stress, sleep deprivation is problematic. Stress and sleep deprivation also lead to heart disease and heart distress because you start to feel heart palpitations and you start to feel exhaustion when you don't have enough sleep and when you have too much stress. Yes, you do. Environmental toxins also play um, place an unnatural strain on our bodies and that requires our needing extra healing and extra support. And every year, we need to engage on a detox. I say we need to engage on some kind of detox every quarter at every change of season. Not only that, at change of season, it reminds us, it reminds us, uh uh-oh, change of season, time to detox. That is an excellent time to remind yourself to do that. And cleansing is the spring clean that we need, that the body needs to clear up the built up toxins and return to the natural state of wellness. All right. And also it gives us an opportunity to initiate some healthy lifestyle changes because I don't know about you, but I am extra squeaky clean with my food habits when I'm on a detox. It's like, you know, I'm extra mindful of it. And it's like, well, okay, I know I've been bad for a couple of weeks or I know I've been traveling or or anything. But I I can tell myself when I get on that detox, I'm going to shape up. All right. And I know I'm going to shape up while I'm detoxing. And detoxing is the reminder that we need to be in ship shop, tip top shape all of the time. And that's the place where we want to be pretty much is be in tip top shape all of the time. It's interesting because some people feel they don't need to detox or they don't have time for it. And a lot of people feel that they don't want to burden themselves with the detox, with detoxing. I'm going to tell you the burden is being placed on your body Mm -hmm. when you don't detox. And that's why it's so important to do that so that you can take the burden off of the body. So what it takes a little extra time. So what it takes a little extra planning. So what it takes a little extra shopping. You know, stop getting off of autopilot when you go into the grocery store. Be mindful about what you're purchasing in that grocery store. And that way, when you're mindful about it, maybe you can get some perfect health going in the house, okay? Maybe we could do that. That would be a good thing, won't it? Yeah, I agree. Detox. Grab my detox book, Seven Easy Steps to Help You Along the Way, from the Ask the Good Doctor book series, you know, Detox. The Detox Edition Remixed for a Healthy New You. That's what it's called, because that's how important and that's how how serious I am about helping you to understand that detoxing is important. Step number two, we're going to use food as medicine. You know, Hippocrates said that the doctor of the future will use no medicine, but will use food as medicine. And I'm one of those doctors of the future that Hippocrates spoke of that uses food as medicine. I'm so happy to be able to do that. And I want you to do it too. In a perfect world, we would eat fresh organic produce at the peak of season and pick it straight from our own gardens. That's in a perfect world. And our food would be without being uh, radiated and pesticided and sprayed by stuff that can kill us and eating would be effortless but that's not the case sadly the state of our food today is far from this beautiful picture and primarily it's because of soil depletion and one thing that i live in the pocono mountains okay and there's a lot of there is a lot of farm land there. And one of the things that I know about the farmland that I always say, I ride past this very, very, very large cornfield all of the time coming in and out of town. And they only grow corn in this lot. Well, I remember learning in third grade science that you're supposed to rotate your crop. I I remember learning that in third grade. That, you know, you can, you will deplete the soil if you try to plant the same thing there all of the time, each and every growing season. You have to, nourishing the soil takes, requires steps that lead to it being nourished naturally. And how you do they just rotate the crops. So I always point to that cornfield and say, my goodness, I never want any corn out of that field. Because what is it going to be like? 
That's all they ever grow there, ever. I've been living in the Poconos 28 years. What in the world is that? does that corn taste like? Well, certainly nutritionally, it has no value at that point since I've been living there. That's all they grow there. So this is probably why. This is exactly why soil is depleted. And um, I think that farmers get lazy, some of them, which is why you pay a premium for, you know, real farm food, which is why you pay a premium at uh, for the stuff that has the dirt on it, the organic stuff, because they, they, they are farming done right, you know, if you know what I mean. Okay, so food transportation is also a problem, which is why we need to support your local farmer. Because you don't want food that's transported from some foreign country. I always look and see where the food is from. I don't want something from Chile. I don't. As badly as I may want grapes, I don't want them from Chile. How, what in the world? And how come they still look fresh in my store? How far is Chile? <laughs> like, seriously? No, that's okay. I, I take a pass on that. It's all good. Mm-mm. And that's what we should, that's the way we should get to. We should get to the point where um, we can say no to certain foods. For instance, where there are watermelon in the store over the winter. It, where'd they get that from? Uh, so where did they get the watermelon from in the dead of the winter? Well, if you're like me, I get them from my freezer. Because <laughs> in the summertime, the watermelon that are grown with the black seeds in them, I buy two watermelon at a time, one to eat right now, one to cut and freeze. The ones that I cut and freeze, I keep them in the freezer because we want watermelon in the winter and not the ones you buy in the store, but the ones I got out of my freezer. All right. And I use them, make a watermelon granada with some lime and some maple syrup. Ooh, we good. But it's I peak, picked it at the peak of the season. So I'm not worried about where they got a watermelon from in December that's in the grocery store. We also have to take a look at the corrupt food industry. You know, that's a show I really haven't tackled. I don't know how far we're going to go with that, but I'll let y'all I'm, I'm sip my tea. Well, mm. yeah, that's problematic. But we need to know that that is, exists. And let me encourage you, no matter where you live, you can grow something. You have a window ledge and you can grow your own herbs. If you will just put your own freshly grown herbs that you grew in your window, in your teeny tiny apartment, if you will just do that, you have a leg up. You really will. You really will. Not only that, it's, it's, it's medicinal in your window, on your windowsill. It's medicine on your windowsill. Any of those herbs, you can put it in a pot and boil it, and it'll be, it can be for something that ails you. Yes, it can. Because many chronic diseases that million people suffer from today are caused by a poor diet. And that poor diet is the SAD diet, S-A-D, Standard American Diet. Steady diet of junk. Mm -hmm. Food has been used as medicine for as long as we have been on planet Earth. And to find wellness and to first rediscover what it means to prevent and truly heal from the common cold and chronic diseases through the power of nutrition. So to embody the power of food, I want you to tap into fresh food, seaweed, ah, love seaweed and not just on sushi nuts and superfood and medicinal herbs and whole living foods bought at whole foods <laughs> whole living foods foods that have not been processed y'all <clears throat> some people don't even know what that is what that looks like and that's why farm food tastes so good you know, and if you if you go to a farmer's market on a Saturday and even in urban areas, OK, New York City has farmer's market every single day. Isn't it down on in the square, 14th Street or something like that? Every day they have farm food. Those farmers come from upstate New York, from New Jersey, from Connecticut. They're bringing their fresh food, their fresh milk, that milk that separates, that has the cream on top. Yeah, and the water on the bottom that looks a little green because cows eat green grass. Yeah, that, that heals your gut, which brings me to point number three, heal and nurture your gut health. Good gut health 
is truly the foundation of your wellness and your vitality. Really, your body irrevocably relies on the gut to transport nutrients from your food into the body. And this is ultimately how we get the fuel and the nutrients we need to thrive, not just survive, but thrive. Our body only has a finite supply of uh, in storage before it needs to get some more in. We have to do that. The f- nutrients we need. Your gut can also lie at the heart of many health issues like irritable bowel syndrome, bloating and distorted bowel habits, and the uncomfortable symptoms of a sluggish gut. Worse yet, increasing your... um, Increasing, I'm sorry, increasing research suggests that leaky gut may even suppress your immune system and lead to more serious autoimmune disorders, as we have discussed continuously. And I like this information um, that came from Food Matters when they talk about you may have the healthiest diet in the world, but the quality of your food and your health is really only as good as your gut. Thank you, Food Matters, because food matters. (laughs) It's so true that the col- death really does begin in the colon. It really does. Because if food is trapped there and it cannot get out, it cannot escape, escape, it putrefies. And the fumes and the smell and you smell and wonder why you smell. And oh my gosh, I know of people who really have a steady diet of Altoids and peppermint and all kind of stuff like that. It ain't got nothing to do with that. It has to do with your daggone what's in your gut that you haven't digested and eliminated. And it's all trapped in there. And then hence come, here come autoimmune diseases, as we have discussed Autoimmune diseases are a response of undigested food latching themselves onto different parts of the body that can't be digested. So undigested food that goes to the myelin sheath brings about MS. Undigested food that goes to the lung is sarcoidosis. Undigested food that goes to the joints is rheumatoid and so on and so on. People never look at it that way, but that's what it is. There's also an emotional component as well, which brings me to point number four. Okay, reduce stress and you must address suppressed emotions. Mm. Let that marinate. Suppressed emotions. You know, there's so much stuff that we put on our calendar and reserve to deal with until June 23rd. That's just like my makeup day. Like, don't put don't don't save that till June 23rd, baby. You know, June 23rd may not seem far away, but depending on what you're dealing with, June 23rd is a lifetime away. Think back to the last time you had a really scary nightmare. Did you wake up in a cold sweat with your heart racing? And chances are your blood pressure and your stress hormone, the cortisol, was skyrocketed and your body had the fight or flight response. A simple nightmare demonstrates the power that stress has on our physical bodies. And what happens in our mind may not be real in that nightmare, but it exerts the same amount of energy and effects on our health. You know, if we don't deal with our emotions, our emotions will deal with us. They will deal with us by way of uh, by way of manifesting of by not being able to digest food. Because if you cannot digest what has happened to you, you also cannot digest your food. And when you cannot digest your food, you end up with a gut problem. You end up with that food being trapped in that colon and then it cannot escape. And then when you have undigested food floating around the body, it attaches itself to places and brings about an autoimmune disease. So it's very important to address our emotions and reduce the stress in our lives. And one of the ways that we can do that is through yoga, meditation, prayer, and having the right work-life balance um, every day. We need to have work-life balance every day. I know some people who say that they're too busy to take a bath. I have a friend who says that she only gets a bath once a year when she's on vacation. I'm like, are you for real? That she's so busy just jumping in and out of the shower. 
That's one thing if you only have a shower. But if you have a tub, please do me a favor. Take the time and sit down in it. We're going I think that we did a show a long time ago. I talked early, early on about talked about how baths versus showers and the importance of baths. Which brings me to the next point. Number five, find your life purpose. That's a good one. Your life purpose. Imagine this. You have a physically well body, but you absolutely hate your job. Guess who's going to end up sick? Because you hate your job. Because you hate doing what it is you do. You hate getting out of the bed. I hate that job. I hate those people. And now I'm not telling you if you don't have a plan to go into your job and quit your job. But I do want you to pray, plan, and pack that desk. That's what I want you to do. You detest going to that office each and every day. And every night before you go to work, every night before you go to bed, you have the sense of dread and you envision yourself trying to figure out a reason why you can't go the next day. All kinds of things. But you're trudging through it for the check. My mother used to say, all money ain't good money. It's hard to imagine this scenario, but it happens to a lot, a lot of people. And according to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I'm sure we're, we're going to go over that another day. But all humans need to have an innate yearning for self-actualization self-actual, and once their physical needs are fulfilled. So go for it. Find your purpose, okay? Professional, personal, find your purpose in life and it will fill you with deep contentment and it will energize you before you can even reach for your green smoothie. (laughs) First thing in the morning, that's the point. First thing in the morning.